guys so i'm finally back with the third episode review for she's gotta have it i know i said that i will be in this one but it's so much going on that like it's just basically a dub so he'll be here when he can be here <laughs> So we're just going to start off with LBD, that's the name of the episode, Little Black Dress. And we left off with Mars seeing that Nola's artwork had been vandalized. So this episode opened up with her showing Nola the posters that were vandalized and they had stuff like slut and like cunt over them and this name Onyx. So Mars is like telling her basically like we're going to find this guy, I'm going to help you find him. We're gonna get him, all this other shit. And she basically tells him like, yo, like, keep it on the low low that I am who I am and that these posters are my posters. Which again, makes complete and total sense for what she wants to be done. Like she doesn't want anyone to know that it's her. In this episode, we then meet Dr. Jemison. And she's Nola's therapist. Thank God she got a therapist. And Dr. Jemison asks her like, what do you want to fix? What do you want to accomplish? And she just starts crying up and she just, in a nutshell, says that she feels like everyone's kind of like violating her. Like she feels violated first from the guys and with her art being vandalized, it's just like, she's feeling like she's like fucked up in the head right now. And she starts telling her about each of, each guy that she's dealing with. And Dr. Jameson just tells her to, to put on something where she feels sexy and something that makes her feel good, something that makes her feel liberated. Why the hell does she tell her that? Why? I don't know. I don't think she should have told her that because this episode just completely went left. Um, it basically leads to her and Karina going shopping in this boutique. And of course the white girl that owns a boutique or working in the boutique is following them around. <sighs> just being so annoying. And Nola finds this black dress. It was really cute. It, had, it was pretty short. It was a mini, mini dress. Had a little cutoff on the shoulders, sleeves. It was cute. It was really cute. They get to the register, and y'all, this dress is five hundred. Let me let me get the, the the full price correct. This dress is five hundred and fifty eight dollars for a basic ass black dress. Mind you, it would be one thing if she could afford it, but she can't even afford to pay her rent. And Karina tells her that. She's like, yo, like, you can't even afford your rent. Like, what is wrong with you? And she goes on to tell her, like, you know, you're doing something that's impulsive. It's something that's not really making any sense. And Nola's like, well, are you telling me that um, what happened to me was my fault? It was my fault that I got attacked? And I'm like, how the hell did she get that from... Karina being a good friend and telling her that she's doing something stupid I don't know but she then goes on and she's like no I didn't tell you that and she's like well if guys can't handle a little black dress then they need to grow up and now I'm like Nola what does one have to do with two really like it's not making any sense to me but whatever she buys the dress she splits it three ways on three different cards if you got to do all that, this says you can't afford it. You really cannot afford it. You can't. Whatever. So up for the test first is Jamie. He takes her on this date. First of all, her Uber service with the suicide doors or Jamie's car service. What car service is that? Like, I need to know because <laughs> that shit was pretty lit. It looked really good. She gets there and she looks great in that dress and Jamie will not stop talking about how good she looks in the dress. Which can make you feel so good as the, the woman wearing the dress but then again it was just like it got to a point where he was just doing too much like he was doing way too much. So she gets in and they sit down well they're about to sit down and the guy like offers to take her coat. She gives him the coat and Jamie then takes his blazer off to kind of put it around her as she sits down. And he's like, it's chilly in here. Girl, no it's not. It's, it's chilly when I say it's chilly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -mm. So the whole night is kind of just a bit awkward because he says something like, this isn't a Miami nightclub. 
okay? And, like, he was just doing little shit the whole night, and he basically asked her at one point, like, when can I see you again, or how do I get to see you more often? And she completely changes the subject, and he asked her about, like, why do you keep doing that? Like, why do you keep changing the subject when it's something serious? And she was like, oh, do I do that? What was even the question? Basically, like, bro, you're not going to see me <laughs> any more than what you're seeing me now. Like, it's up to me. It's on my terms for when you're going to see me. Let it go, my G. Let it go. So, then his two co-workers, like, send over some bottles. She waves hi to them and, like, is like, should we invite them over? And he's like, no, 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 no. So then she's like, well, how come I never get to meet your friends? Like, why aren't you introducing me to them? And he's like, well, you never asked. And she's like, well, I shouldn't have to. But this is what I feel. I feel like, Nola, if this is a situation where you're dating three different people, why are you so hard-pressed to meet his friends? She's like, she doesn't want to be his secret. But I'm like, you are his secret. No matter how many times he says that you're not, you're like, you are. So, I don't get it. Whatever. So then they leave. They leave the restaurant and they're obviously super drunk when they get out of the car. And he's like pressed to come upstairs like can I come up um, and all this other stuff. And this headdress was like talking to him all night saying sex or whatever. And she's basically telling him like she thought he didn't like it because of his behavior and how he was acting. He was being, he claimed that he was being protective of her. And then he says something like, well, if you didn't want the attention, you shouldn't have wore the dress. Skirt! That's where you're wrong. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. I'm not wearing the dress for attention. I'm wearing it because I like it. How about that? And because it was $558, so I'm going to wear it until it fucking turns blue, bitch. That's, <laughs> that tells me something going to wear it. So that I did not like that like that completely turned me all the way off. I already didn't like Jamie so this already was like yep I was right about my decision about hating you. I was correct. I don't like when guys say that type of shit like what are you trying to say. So that basically sets Nola off. She's like super pissed off. She storms up the steps and closes the door on him and leaves him in the street as she should have. So next is Mars. Who, by the way, the whole episode has been trying to figure out who this Onyx person is. He brings it up to his co-workers. Like, he has, like, people, like, looking out for it. So, he's such a good one. He's a good one. So, she comes down the stairs and she's wearing them with, I believe she's wearing them with her spikes. I think. Um, I'm not too sure. I don't remember. I didn't write that down. But I think she's wearing it with um, some spikes. The dress. And he, like, does the most over the sneakers and, like, starts doing push-ups. <laughs> Mars is just a mess like he's legit a mess like I can't so they go to some reggae concert dance hall concert and she's on a speaker why is she on a speaker I have no idea I don't get it but she's dancing on a speaker and then the the performer comes over starts dancing with her and Mars is being like playful like yo 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 like chill and then some guy like kind of like bumps in and tries to get in between Nola and Mars and Mars like steps up like yo like chill like you see her with me and he like flips and he's like yo is, isn't it your bedtime or some stupid shit like that and basically he pushes him and then Nola pushes the guy and then like run out of there basically stupid club stuff stuff that happens at parties for no reason because guys are nosy and they love to be disrespectful for no reason that's basically what it is so then they go outside and they're walking. Mars basically makes a comment about her dress, like, had your dress not looked like that, or had you had you not had that dress on, it wouldn't have happened, or something like that. Mars basically blames the fight on her dress, and she's like, if you can't deal with a little black dress, then you can't deal with me. And then, like, walks away, and he's, like, shouting behind her, like, yo, I was just playing, I was just joking. That I also think she was way too dramatic about. But also, how did a dress start that fight? No, it wasn't a dress. It was the stupid male ego thinking, oh, well, I can talk to this girl any way I want to talk to her. And who gives two shits if she's with a guy? Like, that's bullshit. And I hate when guys do that because I think it's so gross. Like, that doesn't make me want to talk to you. Like, what don't guys get? Like, what do straight guys get? Like, that doesn't make me want to 
like even give you my number, dance with you, have a drink. Like that doesn't make me want to do any of that stuff when you're being a dick. So, but whatever. So the scene ends with her walking away. And then it goes into Shemekka, who ended up going back to her boss, Eddie, Fat Joe. And they had this conversation about like, yo, have you done any research about getting your butt done? You know, I'm worried about the health of you. Like, I can give you the money, but I'm worried about you. Like, how are you? And she's like, oh, well, I did the research and I've listened to stories from tons of girls. So I'm thinking like, oh, she's going to go to like a doctor, like Dr. Miami or something like that. That's what I think. Like, if you do research, then I'm thinking you're going to go somewhere legit. And he gave you enough money for it to be like a legit ass, you know? That's what I think she's going to do, but we'll see. So she, he gives her the envelope and she just leaves. So it was kind of like a pretty random ass scene in this whole episode because most of it was about Nola's dress, but whatever. So now we have Nola in her apartment. She's doing something on her computer. I don't remember what it was. And she gets a text from Greer um, <laughs> about like coming to get a workout or whatever. So she wears her black dress to his apartment. She pops up on him in the middle of a photo shoot with this, this group or this, this band or whatever. And he's like gushing, obviously, over her in this dress. They end up laying down, I think, on his, like, his bed. And they're talking about her dress. And she's like, um, most men can't handle this dress or a little black dress. And he's like, it's my job to handle this dress. And I was like, okay, Greer. Like, this is when I kind of started to, like, take a liking to Greer around this episode. So they get out of the bed and he starts taking pictures of her, which at first she was cool with, but he was doing like really weird shit, like moaning and saying like weird, freaky stuff to her. And she was just not with the shits. And she was like, I'm uncomfortable, like stop, like stop. And he would not stop. No matter how many times she said stop, he just kept taking pictures and kept taking pictures. And she like flipped out on him and was like, yo, like I said, I'm not comfortable, fucking stop. And she stormed out of there. And she goes back to her apartment. And this is where we meet her landlord, a.k.a. her godmom, <laughs> who is the reason to why it's okay for her to miss her rent here and there because it's a godmother. Her landlord is a godmom, and she's, like, lowering the rent price for her. So we meet her godmom, and she's like, you're working that dress. So she gets to her apartment, and now she has the dress off. And we see her like doing something on a board and then we go to like this clip of like Mars praying for her. <sighs> I love Mars. <laughs> I love him so much. Like he is praying for her. Praying for her art. Like praying to find the person. Like just anybody that will get down on their knees and pray for you. Like, he cares. Like, Mars is the man. Like, he's the man of that show. Like, I don't care what nobody says. He is the man of that show. Period. He's so perfect. He's so perfect. And we see Jamie is, like, calling her, leaving voicemails. His usual. It's fucking usual. Being dramatic at the pier. All this other bullshit. And then Greer is, like, editing the pictures of her that he took. But she's pinning the dress to a board. Like, making a piece out of it. Um, and then it like shuts off at that point in the episode. So I kind of think this episode, it made sense to an extent, but most of all, I feel like it was really over the top. Like, I feel like a lot of it was, she was super hypersensitive to a lot of what was being said, but also a lot of what was being said was pretty stupid. So it was kind of like, I guess like a, a balance of, of both of like her being overly dramatic and them being like super dumb, like with just with the shit that they're saying in relation to her dress. But I just thought it was really just stupid to spend $500 on a dress that you're going to wear three times to attempt to prove a point. I don't know. We'll see what happens in the next episode, but I don't know what's going to happen because she basically cut off the three guys. Like, she stopped talking to them. So, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I mean, I do, but I don't know what's going to happen um, in this next episode. And we'll see 
Do you guys think it was dumb for her to spend 500 on a dress just to prove a point? When she can't even pay her rent and she doesn't really have a job, she's kind of waiting for this this letter of her winning this cat lip prize or whatever for the, the painting of Shemekka. So, we'll see. Let me know what you guys think of this episode and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like this video, leave a comment, hit me on Twitter, IG, Snap. All those links will be in the next little clip. And I will see you guys in a few days with a new video. Peace. Hey. Hey.